Hi, I'm Kevin Dunnan, and you're watching Hip World Gourmet. Hi, here we are, sitting outside my own private pub. It's actually called Kevin's Wind because I open it and close it at my wind. My wife calls it the dog house, but I don't really mind as long as I have a chance to come up here now and again. The story as it goes is my father has his own pub at the end of his garden, and I wanted to do one better than him, so here it is. It was actually built for my daughter's christening, and so we had a great party that night. But I bet you you can't wait to get cooking again, so let's go to the kitchen now, and let's get going. So today we're going to do a shallot tartan. So it's glazed shallots in caramelizing and brown sugar, some butter. We're going to put them on top of some puff pastry and bake them in the oven, serve them with some parmesan cheese and some baby, baby lettuce. We're going to follow with a signature dish of my own, which is a loin of bacon with an Irish mist and honey glaze served on a Cocannon potato cake, which is stunning. Then we're going to follow it and finish with a Dombrody kiss which is a really, really rich chocolate truffle covered with ganache, and then we've got a crispy bottom to it. The textures there are also stunning. So let's, let's get started with the shallot tatatan. Basically what we have here is we've got some baby lettuces, we've got some shallots, parmesan cheese, brown sugar, some egg, butter, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and some black pepper. So if you take your shallots first, some of them are a little bit big, so we just cut them in half. I just want to blanch them in some water just for about three minutes, just to soften them, just to help them along. Okay. So throw them into the water. some salt. Then in this pan we're going to start the caramel, the caramel, which is some brown sugar, and some butter. Okay, and then with some puff pastry, we're going to cut a disc this size. We got a dish for the oven. You want, you want to start melting the, the brown sugar and we're going to take the shallots out of the water and we're going to salt them in, salt in, in and around the caramel. Okay, we'll just strain off the water off the shallots. Put them back in the heat. We're going to pour in the melted sugar and brown, melted sugar and butter. Basically, you want to start to get this to caramelize. You can always already see the way the sugar and the butter is coating the shallots. Okay, at that point, I'm just going to drop them on top of the puff pastry. You can see 
You can imagine what's going to happen here. The puff paste is going to rise up in the oven. It's going to encase the shallots. And you've got, you've got that beautiful brown sugar, the butter. Just pour it over the top. And just around the, ed the edges, I'm just going to brush the puff pastry with a little bit of egg, just to give it that golden brown. Okay, we'll pop that into the oven. That'll take about 10 minutes or so. Then we're gonna take it out and we're gonna to top it with some baby lettuces, shavings of Parmesan cheese, drizzle some balsamic vinegar and some olive oil over it. And it's a very simple, traditional dish turned on its head. Bring up our plate. Just check on the tatatan now. Wow. Look at that. Stunning. You can see the way the puff pastry is risen and it's encasing the shallots and the caramelized sugar is just pouring over top. Excellent. So we just pop that into the center of the plate. Okay, and then with our... I just wanted kind of a loose presentation on that, so I'm just going to... As if I've just dropped the lettuce down on top. Just to the side, because you want to show off the shallots. It's very important. We're going to drizzle some olive oil over the lettuce. Over the plate as well. A little bit of balsamic vinegar. Some shavings of Parmesan cheese. Some, with some black pepper. So there you have our first course. It's puff pastry encasing caramelized shallots topped with some baby lettuce and some parmesan cheese. Stay tuned now because we're, I'm going to bring you for a real treat. I'm going to bring you up to Woodland Meats where Pat is actually going to show us how to cure some bacon. We are the only country in the world that actually cures meat the way we're going to be showing you now. So come with me now and we'll go and meet Pat. How are you doing? We're in Clonroach, a county expert, and we're here to see how the pork is cured into bacon. And uh, Pat's given me this to wear, and uh, don't laugh. Come on, we go and find Pat. Hey, Pat, how's it going? Kevin, how are you doing? Good to see you. Excellent, come on. So, what have we got here? So, here we are, and this is uh, CL Foods just sort. This is where the bacon is cured. Yeah. And uh, these were killed yesterday now and they were hung here overnight to cool down. This is a full carcass. What sort of weight are these? Uh, they'll be kill out about 85 kilos, then we'd say you have all the weight loss from there on. Right. In other words, so uh, that's, that's the optimum killing weight. Like. Excellent. So where do we go from here then? Well, this is it. The, 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 it's brought into a bone room then, where it's uh, broken down for, and you do your trimming there. Some of it goes for sausage meat, some of it goes for curing for bacon. Right. Or whatever, so if we want to uh, go yeah. see where the cure right. is breaking down. Excellent. Now, Kevin, here we are. Where are we now? This is uh, in the bone hall. This is where the carcasses come in and they're, they're going out into the different cuts. So this is basically the line that we would buy this in then, is it? This is what you take out, comes out of the center section of the pig, and this is what you use. This is, uh, the bone is still in that one by the time you get it. 
the ribs that you've taken out or whatever. You always use that as the, that's like um, a loin chop and stuff like that. That's what you can use for a loin chop. This is your pork loin chops. In pork, it's a pork loin. In bacon, it's a bacon back. It's the same thing as if one is cured, like. Right. And uh, then the the rib. The rib is still in that. You can then use your ribs for barbecue ribs or whatever after yeah, that. Excellent. It comes in here, then this is into the curing room in here. And Kevin, this is the curing machine here. All right. This is uh, where our lines of pork go through. And uh, there's a series of needles here what's behind you. What's that? These are all your pipes. These uh, feed in a solution of salt and water, nitrates, sugar. And a little bit of fat secret. And a, li and a little, a few secret, <laughs> a few secret ingredients that are not going to be divulged. They come through here, this injects it into it on this conveyor. They go into a fermenting room here, they go into tanks. They're stored for uh, about four days. Right. Can we, can we go in there? No. So unfortunately, it's, uh, it's uh, climatically controlled. And that's it's, where the true secrets that's are. That's where the true secrets <laughs> are, unfortunately. You can't, you can't get any further. And uh, it's taken out then and hung for a day then where it dries out. Right. And uh, that's your bacon then. Excellent. That's well, where it goes. Kevin. Yeah. Pleasure of being here. So now you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start up my own. So there you have it. Curing bacon in an Irish style. So let's go back to the kitchen now and cook up some of it. So that was really interesting. Now you understand why I say that this bacon is such a special dish. It's because the care and attention that Pat takes when he's actually curing the, the pork to bring it to us to get it to this stage. We're gonna go on now and we're gonna do my signature dish, which is a loin of bacon with a honey and Irish mist glaze, served on a cocaine potato cake and braised cabbage, Savoy cabbage, straight from the garden. So I've taken the loin of bacon and I've actually steamed it for about a half an hour and I've cut it into a portion size. What we're gonna do is we're going to stud it with cloves just push it into the skin. Basically what that's doing is it's actually infusing the flavor of the cloves into the bacon. It's just giving that other dimension to the dish. So we just get a pan there. Just place it into your pan. Now obviously if you're doing it for four, you can put four on the one pan. Just some honey. A little bit of Irish mist, which is an Irish whiskey liqueur. Okay. And then, I just want to blend that into the honey. Stirring it around. And then we're going to brush the bacon with the honey. And we're going to pop that into the oven. We get our grater, we get a potato, which is just cooked. And we're just gonna grate it down. Like so. Okay, put that into your bowl. You get your bacon bits and some cabbage right. a little bit of egg which helps bind it and hold it together and some flour finish it off then with some black pepper and some salt and pepper Okay, we want to mix that together and then you want to bind it together, use your hands. Okay, and if you get some flour then, and put some flour into your hands and onto the board. And you're going to shape it into a disc. So just move it around the board on the plate with your hands either side, and you're actually shaping it into a round disc. Okay, and if you put your pan on the heat. A little bit of olive oil. Over 
top. We'll just let that heat up. While we're doing that, we're going to put some water on to cook our cabbage. Okay, and put some salt, salt into your water. Okay, with that, we'll just drop in our cabbage into the water. And take out our bacon. Put it on the stove there. Turn it over. You can see it's getting lovely and golden brown. Take a little bit of your Irish mist then. Pour it in on top. Let it flame. Again, we're taking the alcohol contents out of the Irish mist and we're really getting the true flavour of the main ingredients there. Okay. Turn that over again. Turn down the heat on your potato cake. Just keep move, moving it around. It takes about two minutes each side to cook because basically what you're trying to do is you're, you're actually only trying to heat up the potato again and cook through the egg yolk that's, that you put in there. The cabbage, I like to keep our cabbage quite al dente so there's a good bite to our veg. So we just take that off. Strain off the water. Okay, with that, just drop in a little bit of butter into the pan. Again, a little bit of seasoning and some black pepper. Okay, so we turn off, turn, turn off everything. With your potato cake then, place that just off center in the plate. Then you get your cabbage, make sure it's coated in the butter so it's a nice glaze off it. Put it over top, like so. Take out your bacon from the pan. Okay, you're going to slice this in three. One. If you're doing this for more than one person, you can always do it in a, in a bigger piece and then just stud it with cloves and coat the outside of it with the honey and the Irish mist and cook it as a whole. So you can just slice it down then as if you're carving up a joint. Again, we're just going to fan that over top. And then with the sauce, we're just going to drizzle it around the plate. There you go. So there you have it. One of my classic signature dishes here in Dumbrody House. We're going to follow this dish now with a Dumbrody kiss. We have a saying here, Dumbrody kisses are a truffle sweeter and our chocolate mousse that's in here is just like a truffle. So stay tuned.
So now we're gonna make that Dumbrody kiss. So we start off, there's a couple of things we need to do here. You've already seen how to make the ganache. We're gonna be using that in a few minutes. So we're gonna start by making the chocolate mousse element of this. So you get a bowl. I've got some chocolate, chocolate buttons here, which are 52% cocoa. It's a very good quality chocolate. It's vitally important that you use good quality chocolate for this because it makes all the difference for the finishing taste of the dessert. So you want to melt down the chocolate and then you get another bowl and you pour in some egg yolks. Get a whisk. So what I have here is I have cornflakes, it's regular ones that you have for breakfast but we're not gonna put milk with them today. Then you've got some mixed peel. And I have a Mars bar. A Mars bar is basically chocolate with some fudge underneath and some caramel on top. Okay, so we take that. You wanna dice that quite small, which, which are cornflakes then you want to just kind of break them up in your fingers. Yeah. And some peel. Okay. We're gonna pour a spoon of the chocolate into the crisp back, back there. You just want to mix that around. You can see it there until it blends all together. Use the back of your spoon and kind of just press it down so you get this consistency that you see there. Okay, I have this mold here. You can buy those in most kitchen compliment stores that you'll, you'll see, but it doesn't really matter what shape you use, but I'm using individual portions. So whatever molds you have, you can either use like an espresso cup or a coffee cup but always remember to line it with some cling film. Then in the base of the dish, put your, your crisp. Now you can understand what I'm talking about because that's in the base of our dish, but when we turn it upside down, it's gonna be at the top of the dish. And uh, you, can see, you can really now tell the crunch as you, as you bite through your dessert and you're getting that textures again. So with that chocolate then, we're ready there on, on those. So you bring back your eggs, do another good beat up, and then we're gonna pour the chocolate into the egg yolks. And give that a mix. It's gonna get quite thick, okay. Then we're going to fold in some whipped cream Just kind of stir it around like gently, don't go too vigorously now. You can see that's getting very, very rich. This dessert is really for chocolate sinners. There we go. Look at that. Okay, and then we're just gonna pour Chocolate mixture into the mold. Okay, and then just place that into the freezer for about an hour until it sets. I've made some earlier on, so I have some frozen. You can see it's, it's quite hard there. So with the cling film, it actually helps you take it out of the mold. So you can just stick it in, into a bit of hot water. And there you go. You can see, you can see the two layers 
of You've got the crispy topping, and then you've got the chocolate mousse below. Okay, with the, with the ganache that we made earlier, just gonna make sure it's well, now that you can really see the shine on, on the ganache. It's very important that your mousse is frozen, because what it actually does is it helps set the ganache instantly. with your ladle. Always put a plate underneath your rack. You just want to pour it over. Make sure it's covered completely. If you just leave that to the side, it'll set perfect. So for plating this dessert, it's very simple, because the dessert is speaking for itself. It's so rich and decadent. Just move that. Mmm, delicious. Okay, with your ganache then, we can use that as the sauce as well. So just with a spoon, just go around the plate like this. So there you have it, the Dombrotic Kiss. There you have it. To recap on what we covered today, we started off with a glazed shallot tatan, follow, followed by my signature dish, a loin of bacon with a honey and Irish mist glaze served on that organic cabbage and the potato cake. And then we finished off with this Dombroni kiss, which is the chocolate crisp on the top, the chocolate mousse underneath, the ganache over top. It's really, really decadent. Join me again when we're discovering new recipes here on Hip World Gourmet. Don't forget, we do it for the love of food. Slanta. Thank you.